Good morning, let's get started. Um, my name is Andreas Ferber. Um, I'm a project manager for the ARM architecture at SUSE Labs. And uh, right now I'm going to give you an update on the cross compiler tool chains for OpenSUSE. So first of all, what is this about? Um, this is not about systems that are actually running OpenSUSE, at least not in general, um, but rather about small uh, microcontroller systems that don't have a whole lot of RAM and uh, code storage. Um, but at some point, you want to develop software for, to deploy on such microcontrollers. Uh, you want to get the code that you have developed onto such microcontroller boards. And once you have them, maybe there are problems and you need to debug them. So I'm going to run through all of those stages, more or less. Um, two years ago, at OpenSUSE conference in Nuremberg, I had presented um, the first real cross-compiler work. So we had some ice cream cross-compilers before that could be used for developing like kernels for um, systems running um, OpenSUSE so that you could take an x86 um, system and develop kernels for uh, S390 originally or also for Power and later ARM. Um, and now it was also possible to develop um, with a standard C library code for uh, non-OpenSUSE targets. The first one was um, the Epiphany target. Um, this was used for the Parallela board and a crowdfunded um, ARM board, which has an FPGA, and via the FPGA, it connects to this uh, coprocessor chip. And then the other one, the second one, was um, for RX, uh, Renaissance Extreme, um, because there was the um, Sacra board and also some other boards um, that um, it was possible to actually deploy the code to. So just for completeness, what existed as well, as I mentioned, there's also cross-compilers for OpenSUSE, in, in particular for OpenSUSE kernels, not really for OpenSUSE applications. Um, there's the uh, client compiler tool chain as part of the um, LLVM package, um, which provides several targets depending on um, how it's being configured for us. But at least for x86-64, we build um, pretty much almost everything um, we can. There's also a tool called SCC, uh, which is its own compiler tool chain and is being used for microcontrollers that have less than 32 bits. So, for example, uh, STM8, um, which is, you know, 8-bit microcontroller and the um, AD51 um, architecture as well, among others. So, moving on to what is actually new this year. Um, so, Richie has been working on um, avoiding the need to specify the cross-compilers by the exact version name. So the way that um, they are built, we, uh, they are built as part of the GCC7, GCC8, and so on packages, and that means that the binary that gets generated will in the end be something dash GCC dash 8, for example. And But normally, make files when you build um, open source um, packages will assume that you simply have a CC or GCC compiler with a cross-compiler prefix. So this would um, require either patching make files or at least overriding like a handful of different variables in order to be able to use such a tool chain. Um, using the alternatives mechanism, we now get symlinks from GCC to GCC7 or GCC8, whatever is um, has been installed, um, the latest or con um, configured by the user, which in turn allows us to just use this. Um, do we have any laser pointer here? No. Um, so we can just use this. <laughs> Well, no matter, you can, you can see it anyway. So this uh, cross-compile variable should, in most cases, now be the only one that you use, and foo dash would be the prefix um, that is being generated for the um, specific um, tool chain. So that would be um, rx-elf dash um, would be the cross-compile prefix, and then uh, gcc, ld, and so on, all the tools. Um, a second development was that um, after a phase of announcement, we moved the newlib package from base system, 
where it was alongside uh, glibc and uh, uselibc into the dvl gcc package which had the advantage that we can better stage changes because then we have gcc and newlib in the same place in particular when we add new tool chains otherwise we always have a um, well we still have a cyclic dependency between the packages but at least there we can test it before it um, all goes to factory and well, the remaining problem with that is that we always need to take care to submit both um, the GCC package and the newlib package or whatever C library is being used for the respective factory. There's also um, AVR libc, for example, possibly further ones. Um, they always need to be submitted together and this hasn't always worked out that sometimes we had unresolvable um, GCC cross packages in factory. What is new from my side this year is that um, for several months now we have a new ARM cross-compiler toolchain which is able to develop code um, for use in either firmware or microcontrollers. So that would be the Cortex-M class of processors as well as the um, Cortex-A class where we don't need um, anything specific. This was originally driven um, by the um, Spectre and Meltdown um, security vulnerabilities that I will be going into in the next presentation slot. Um, we needed to update a software package from version 1.4 to 1.5 and suddenly it grew a dependency on not just compiling code for either 64-bit ARM code or 32-bit ARM code, but it needed both in the same package. So as a solution, we would be building it on ART64 using the native GCC there, but also using this um, new cross-compiler um, in order to, de, um, to build parts of that code that would be reused in that. Um, the exact list of uh, where you can use this compiler code chain is probably much longer than what I've listed there. I'm not going to read all of this. Um, what's noted in, uh, in brackets there is um, the various ways that you can actually get the code onto the board. So. Um, ST uh, Microelectronics has their own ST link mechanism, which is a USB adapter that um, several tools exist for um, getting the code um, onto the board. Then there's the um, CMSYS DAP standard that was developed by ARM, which is also USB based with uh, two different tools available um, to get that on there. And then there's the J link, um, as well as in some cases, you have systems um, with um, heterogeneous cores where you have both Cortex A and Cortex M cores and then you can just boot into the Linux system and use certain commands to move, um, to, to um, put code in place to be executed by um, the uh, microcontroller cores or real-time cores part of that system. What is relatively new still is that uh, we not only have a port of OpenSUSE running um, on the uh, RISC-V um, architecture, but rather that we also have a cross-compiler in order to develop code for the initial um, set of um, RISC-V microcontroller boards. So in particular here, the um, HI-5.1 uh, was uh, quite known in the press. Um, I have to admit that I have not yet tested this on the board actually because uh, we don't yet have our packages set up in order to actually get the code onto the board. Has anyone in the audience maybe experimented with that already? No one, okay. Oh no, this is, um, this is uh, what you are thinking of is the... Um, Higher un un unleashed board, that which is like a 999 board. That's the one that can actually run Linux. Now, this is a small one that's just Arduino form factor um, and can run only microcontroller code, no Linux. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, not taking credit for this myself, there were several people that have also been working on integrating um, AVR tool chains that were previously in a separate cross-tool chain um, project into um, this new set of GCC packages. Um, Richard Biener has been um, integrating that, one of the um, tool chain maintainers. And while well, there's uh, lots and lots of boards, in particular the original Arduino boards and several clones of that, that, that can be used with then. There's also tools like ABR Dude is one that um, can be used to just get that virus serial connection onto um, the boards. 
Moving on to some stuff that is not yet in factory. Um, uh, we've been in contact with a company called Andes in order to um, make uh, packages available for their um, proprietary microcontroller architecture. So they're um, also working on RISC-V, and this is the previous generation of boards that um, they've come up with. And another one is FT32, which is from formerly from FTDI, the company that makes the USB UART adapter um, chips. Um, by now, it's called um, BridgeTech. And uh, yeah, there are also some low-cost boards available um, that the code um, can actually be used with. Um, however, yet again, uh, we don't yet have packaged the tools to actually get the code um, onto those boards. Open topics. So, um, whenever we build cross-compiled cross code, so that means like um, the new lib um, packages that would actually execute not on your local system, but on the microcontroller board or um, as part of some other core um, on, um, on your Linux board. Um, whenever the OBS and RPM scripts run in order to extract the debug info symbols into a separate package, then that has led to um, um, binaries for foreign architectures breaking. I'm not entirely sure why that is, but we've needed to always explicitly disable the stripping and extraction of those debug symbols um, from the packages. Would be interesting to find out uh, why that is and whether we maybe can fix that in a central place instead of in every package. So if you want to build um, some general purpose library or some firmware, then you would need to add at least two lines to your spec file to um, suppress this functionality. The second one is that, um, in theory, we could sit down and build, I don't know, maybe 20 or something um, cross-compiler tool chains. But um, for one, that would take quite long to build whenever the GCC team checks in a new revision of the compiler or maybe some patch in OBS. Um, and for another, um, originally we had um, packaged um, the cross compiles for for a number of um, probably months, but um, we figured out that the installation that certain binaries were getting installed to um, was not the one um, where um, at runtime that were being expected. So we had built successfully compilers, but they were not fully working at runtime in order to find like certain um, CRT um, dot O files. Um, and basically what we're at the moment still lacking is some um, package, and we're still discussing how exactly to do that. Maybe one of you has suggestions for how to do that for just um, compiling like a small hello world example to make sure that the compiler tool chain is in itself um, consistent. So it would not be so much about does it um, compile code that is actually working on a specific CPU. There's other test suites for that, but rather just for validating that if we build a GCC 7 and a GCC 8 tool chain for a particular architecture, that each one of those actually um, works as um, expected. And finally, um, one topic that I um, mentioned yesterday in the package hub talk is that it would also be cool if we could make um, some of those cross compilers available not just for OpenSUSE in the OBS, um, but also for the commercial SUSE Linux Enterprise family of products. And there are certain rules at the moment that stand in the way of this, in that um, obviously SUSE is already shipping GCC compilers um, for um, compilation of SLE code. And as such, we cannot just submit the GCC 7, GCC 8 packages that those cross compilers are now part of um, into Package Hub because that would conflict with the packages that SUSE is providing. So at this point, we have cross compiler tool chains. We're able to turn um, source code that we've written ourselves into code to be run on such microcontrollers. Now, how do we actually get that um, onto the boards? My preferred solution for that is a package called OpenOCD, short for on-chip debugger. Um, 
Unfortunately, um, the development of the package has not stalled, but the releases are currently quite um, for, I guess, more than a year there's been no release, um, but there is active development going on with the Garrett review system and um, changes going into the um, project um, are, um, are getting reviewed quite rigorously usually. Um, so my proposal would be that instead of sticking with the 0 0.10 release that is currently out there for Tumbleweed, it should be um, okay if we would actually switch to Git snapshots, simply because then we could have like um, support for more chipsets every few weeks or months whenever something new comes out. Um, the problem with that is that there are dependencies that OpenOCD has a one library for um, interfacing with those J-Link um, USB adapters. Um, it also uses uh, TCL runtime, so there may be points in time where the snapshot of OpenOCD may also require a snapshot of, say, libjlink. So that would be a, a trade-off to make. Um, there's another tool um, packaged most recently called PyOCD. Um, it was originally just a Python library for interfacing with embed boards that are um, based on this um, CMS DAP standard. Um, more recently, it has also grown some tools that can be run with a command line with a um, lot of um, arguments for just um, starting a, a GDB server. And then via GDB, you can get um, your code onto the board. And finally, the latest um, addition from my side was the ESP tool package. So this is for Espressive ESP32, ESP8266, and so on boards, um, based on the Extensa architecture. Um, unfortunately, um, the tool chain for building the code um, is not yet fully upstream, so that we cannot really put that into um, factory yet, but uh, I'm in touch with them about hopefully getting that done in the future. So, yeah, some closing remarks. Um, there was the question already about uh, risk five, um, so slightly related to that. Um, if you have a board that um, does not have an MMU but has sufficient RAM, at least on ARM and a few other architectures, it is possible to run uh, not just microcontroller firmware code, but also an um, embedded Linux, not provided by OpenSUSE, but uh, using our tools, it can easily be built from the Linux sources. Um, there are um, various ways to go about that, so the most frequent case is to use the UC libcng. Um, and there, um, what I have been working with so far is the um, flat tool chain, which means that you build um, ELF binaries and then you convert them to a special flat format. Um, ST has also proposed a new ABI called FDPIC. This has been existing for like um, Blackfin, for example, for quite some time already. Um, the proposal now is to do such a tool chain for ARM as well. It has been, um, there's a proof of concept out there, but it is not yet merged in the upstream um, GCC project. This would um, allow to reuse libraries between executables even without having their own virtual address spaces. And some of the examples that uh, I've tested this on has been the STM32 F4, um, FM4, um, originally from Fujitsu, and the XMC4500. Then another remark, um, going slightly beyond microcontrollers, um, FPGA field programmable gate arrays um, is a way that you can not just develop um, software, but hardware based on software descriptions. Um, so you can configure, um, you know, or and gates and you have local memory in there that you can also um, have um, local storage on. And using this, one thing you can do is you can implement soft core um, Processors, so you can actually um, have an FPGA chip and emulate, in theory, well, and 
ARM system or uh, RISC-V is at the moment quite popular because for a long time there were no um, physical boards that you could run the code on, um, which then opens a whole lot of range of use cases that people might have, like Xilinx has those microblaze soft cores, um, NIOS is another one from another vendor, um, OpenRISC um, has seen a few uses, and who knows what other cores there are or maybe in the future, so um, that will be something to um, keep an eye on, on whether there is any demand for that. And the cool thing is that out of all those families, well, usually if you go to Xilinx, uh, Lattice, uh, Microsemi, then you know they all have their proprietary tool chains in order to generate that code from a standard VHDL or Verilog description. Um, but for ICE40, um, um, a few years uh, back, someone has actually started reverse engineering the format needed for that, and there are now open source tools in order to develop for this family of admittedly slightly smaller FPGAs, but still it is um, a very interesting start. With that, I am done. Are there any further questions in the audience? Andrew, shall we get you a microphone? Mm. Not working. Muss man lange drücken oder? Uh, yeah, uh, the uh, the package is all in factory for all architectures, so that if you wanted to cross compile on ARM, mm -hmm. you could, or on x86 or Power or whatever. So it's all available in factory now. Yes. Yeah, so there are no um, restrictions as to the code working, and in factory ARM you will find obviously the um, the corresponding packages for. Um, ARM hosts. Um, what is, I think, not enabled is the um, the development project. Deval GCC does not have all architectures enabled, so they're not building the full architecture. In some cases, where I've said, you know, for example, the prime use case of cross-developing Epiphany is on ARMv7, so that's like one tool chain that we have specifically enabled there to build, but I don't think that all of them are available there. But if you take a look at the ones in factory, then yes, there is no restriction on um, building them that I should be aware of. So, um, yes, we have been... Um, we have been using, as I mentioned, the cross ARM NUN tool chain on ARCH64. So even on ARM, you can cross compile four other ARM systems. That would be the other thing to, to look out for because, um, uh, we would not build ARCH64 cross compilers on ARCH64. That's the restriction that we have. So if the name is different of the architectures that we're building them for, then that should work. Any last question? Uh, I didn't hear you mention the GCC-AVR and the typical workflow where you use AVR to uh, program to uh, Atmel 8-bit microcontrollers. Um, is this something that you work on and test and have packages for as well? Um, I personally don't. I just know that the um, architect uh, that the um, that the package exists. Um, I'm not sure. It, it could be either in hardware electronics or in um, cross tool chain AVR. But uh, personally, um, out of all the odd architectures I work with, I don't happen to actually have an AVR based board, so I've not hated it myself yet. I've had Arduino builds working doing that, but I can't remember if I took Arduino okay. Studio from within OBS or if I just took Arduino Studio from okay. upstream, but it is possible to do without too much effort. Okay, I guess uh, we'll have to finish here. Thank you very much for your time. And if you want to hear more about what we've done with the um, ARM cost compiler tool chain, stay tuned for the next talk. Thank you very much.